abducted kids off a cliff in a shocking murder-suicide. An absolutely premeditated plan. Inside their hidden house of horrors. Then, her son's chilling final moments revealed. Scared from what? Definitely wasn't my race. Will she get justice? Also, inside the American cartel and the hunt for a cop killer with ties to El Chapo. Street and prison gangs all fit into their puzzle. Plus, can this doctor permanently boost your energy? The steps to fix it are actually pretty easy. Now, DailyMail.com, the world's most read newspaper website, brings you Daily Mail TV. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the show. We are very glad to have you with us today for our roundup of some of the most riveting true crime cases now streaming. And we begin with the horrific tale of six adopted children driven over a cliff by their moms in a horrific murder-suicide that gripped the nation. While Jen and Sarah Hart really appeared to be these picture-perfect parents on social media, the moms had been reportedly beating and starving their children behind closed doors for years and appeared to be on the run with the kids when Jen Hart plunged all of them to their untimely deaths. Today, Daily Mail TV is investigating a story that still has so many unanswered questions. They were just like leading the way, like this is how you live. On social media, same-sex couple Jen and Sarah Hart appear to be giving their six adopted children a life filled with love, happiness, and purpose. But in reality, reports of the Hart's beating and starving their children span nearly 10 years and were filed in three states before Jen Hart drove all eight family members off of a cliff in a shocking 2018 murder-suicide. What we know about family annihilators is that sometimes there are cycles where the person feels extremely in need of control. Forensic neuropsychologist Dr. Judy Ho weighs in. They may entertain thoughts like, if I can't have the children, no one can. Okay, and what was the reason why you were checking on that? Concerns that the children aren't being fed. Now, Discovery Plus's Broken Hearts is unraveling an investigation that exposed allegations of abuse and how the heart mothers covered their tracks. The real threats to their safety was something that was dismissed because, as Minnesota Child Welfare people said, the problem is these women look normal. And by normal, what they meant was white. Investigative reporter Zarin Burnett explains how the heart mothers duped friends, social media followers, and the system by exploiting a positive image of their mixed race family. The hearts were masterful influencers, but using a racial context as their content. Like all good con artists, they recognize that most people don't have time to investigate past the surface. The children were often malnourished. They looked way younger than their actual age. By 2011, Sarah Hart pleaded guilty to misdemeanor domestic violence after Abigail, covered in bruises, reportedly told a teacher her mother gave her an owie. Soon after, the Harts pulled their children out of school and eventually relocated from Minnesota to Oregon in 2013, where more allegations of abuse and food deprivation were reported. Nobody takes it seriously. Two white women say, no, it's okay, don't believe our black children. We adopted them, we're good people. And that's all they needed to say. During this time, the Hearts posted this viral photo of Devante tearfully hugging a Portland police officer at a protest, now a powerful reminder of his suffering. He's crying knowing that he's not even safe in his own home and that, that no authority has ever been able to protect him, no matter how many times he and his siblings have asked for help. In 2017, after relocating to Washington State, Hannah reportedly jumped from a second floor window at 1.30 a.m. and begged neighbors to rescue her. We know that Devante Hart went over to that house nine times asking for food. On March 23rd, 2018, neighbors contacted authorities. That same day, the hearts fled south toward California. And by March 25th, Jen has driven them off the cliff and into the Pacific. This was an absolutely premeditated plan. Both of them had been researching ways to essentially kill people off. A 2019 coroner's inquest determined Jennifer and Sarah Hart died by suicide and their children homicide. I would hope the people stay outraged about what happened to the Hart children, both for the sake of what we lost in their lives and for all the lives that we are going to lose because we do not face this issue. Now, all eight family members, they have been legally declared dead in this horrific case. However, the remains of Devante Hart have not yet been found. We turn our attention now to the tragic case of a mother's fight for justice when college sophomore Praveen Barugis was found dead on the side of a road following an off-campus party. Police initially determined that death accidental. But his heartbroken mom, she just didn't buy it. And today, his mother, Lovely, is sitting down with Daily Mail TV and discussing her relentless battle to bring his alleged killer to justice. Praveen 
was a great son and a great friend. In February of 2014, Southern Illinois University student Praveen Varghi vanished after leaving a party. Five days later, Praveen's frozen body was found in a wooded area just a few miles away from his campus. We will not stop until the whole truth is out. Now, Discovery Plus's Who Killed My Son is examining Praveen's mysterious death and his mother Lovely's hunt for the truth. We are not going back without knowing what happened to our son. Investigators initially told Lovely her son had been drinking when he got a ride with a recent acquaintance, Gage Bethune. As soon as I heard that, it did not match Praveen's character. During police questioning, Bethune claimed he pulled over when the two got into a dispute and Praveen ran off into the woods. I'm scared for my life. Definitely wasn't my race. I'm not used to being on that type of you know, population. As soon as he started saying that, I knew where he was going. They just let him talk. A state trooper approached Bethune's vehicle the night of the incident and is seen doing a quick cursory check with his flashlight. If he had done a little bit more, my son would be here today. An initial autopsy revealed Praveen died from hypothermia after allegedly losing his way in the woods. But after viewing her son's body, Lovely was not convinced. I could see the bruise on his forehead. I knew somebody beat my kid. Lovely, are you on the phone? Broadcaster and victim advocate Monica Zukas helped shine a light on this case. Lovely from the beginning said, I just want a thorough investigation and answers. What happened to my son? Lovely's fears were confirmed when a second autopsy commissioned by the family showed signs of blunt force trauma to Praveen's head. The second autopsy revealed three blows to the forehead and multiple other injuries on his body, total of 22 injuries on him. And it showed there was no drugs or alcohol in his blood. Despite these new findings, the state's attorney said no charges would be filed against Bethune. I couldn't give up. It's my son. In 2016, special prosecutor David Robinson took over the case. He said, I'm not playing for you. I'm working for you. That following year, Bethune was taken into custody and in 2018 found guilty on one count of first-degree murder. But six weeks later, his murder conviction was vacated after his defense team argued the use of the word knowingly in the indictment may have confused jurors. He walked out of court a free man. They did not want a white boy behind bars for killing a brown boy. A new trial date for Bethune has not been set, but Praveen's mother has already found some closure. When Gage was found guilty, I felt like Praveen's name was cleared. For me, we have peace. As a way to honor her son, Lovely's family has established the Praveen Barugis Memorial Scholarship, and it's awarded to students pursuing a criminal justice major. Next up for you, it is the riveting case of a Burbank, California police officer gunned down by a local gang member following a routine traffic stop and his fellow officer's vow to bring his killer to justice. We are taking you inside the international manhunt for the shooter and the explosive investigation that exposed ties between a violent street gang and Mexico's infamous Sinaloa cartel, led by the notorious El Chapo. It was just an overwhelming looking crime scene. In November of 2003, Burbank police officers Matthew Pavelka and Gregory Campbell approached a suspicious SUV in the parking lot of a Ramada Inn. At that point, David Garcia and alleged accomplice Ramon Aranda, members of a local violent street gang known as the Violent Boys, opened fire on the young cop and his partner. The fierce shootout left both Pavelka and Aranda dead. Campbell was critically wounded. Garcia managed to flee. So we knew the name Violent Boys, but at that point, what I remember is that it was kind of a low-level gang. Now, Discovery Plus's American cartel dives into the massive manhunt for Garcia. It involved multiple agencies, including LAPD's Major Crimes Division team, with members led by retired LAPD Lieutenant Adam Berkovici. I had personnel from both the Violent Crime Task Force Los Angeles and Counterterrorism assigned to me. So 
I had a lot of resources. We all kept our eye focused on the mission, which was to bring a cop to justice. While the police quickly tied the suspects to the violent boys, evidence at the crime scene suggested the gunmen were part of a far more sophisticated operation. When the meth was found, it was from high-grade lab quality. It wasn't cut, wasn't mixed with anything else. The Mexican cartels were already deeply entrenched in the United States. Police tracking Garcia quickly learned he'd escaped into Mexico, reportedly with help of high-level gang affiliates with alleged ties to the powerful Sinaloa cartel. Sandoval, he was the one that got Garcia taken that night across the border into Mexico. Mariana Meza was married to the sister of Luis Sandoval. There was a photo for our wedding. So that tells you the personal connection between the gang and the Sinaloa cartels. Consider the gravity of that realization that the violent boys were connected with the Chapo Guzman organization. Less than two weeks after Matthew Pavelka's cold-blooded murder, David Garcia was captured by Mexican police and turned over to U.S. Marshals. Matt Pavelka's handcuffs were put on him and they stayed on him until we got him into the jail at Burbank Police Department. With Garcia behind bars and awaiting trial, then LAPD Chief William Bratton vowed to bring down the Violent Boys Gang. For the next 18 months afterwards, my unit was constantly called in to take down these guys. They were some very bad dudes with a lot of guns when we took them into custody. Operation Silent Night reportedly led to the indictment of 43 members in 2005, and by then, Police already made 231 arrests, impounded 25 cars, seized 75 guns, 300 pounds of narcotics, and more than a million dollars in cash as part of the gang sweep. Nearly a decade later, in 2012, long-awaited justice was served when Garcia pleaded guilty to murder and attempted murder and was sentenced to life without parole. There was a collective decision that life without parole was the most fitting for this cop kid because he would never get out of jail. And we have just scratched the surface of this case for a much deeper dive. Be sure to check out American Cartel. It is streaming now on Discovery+. Plus. And that is where you can also catch Broken Hearts and Who Killed My Son. Now, there is much more Daily Mail TV ahead for you, so please stay right there. Stay with us. Later, can this doctor permanently boost your energy? The steps to fix it are actually pretty easy. And up next, jaw-dropping transformations where you won't even recognize the final results. Plus, making it look easy, how she creates these realistic animal sculptures all from wool. Then, meet the man reaching impossible new heights with totally insane jumping skills. And only instant replay will show you just how unbelievable items after these artists are done with them. And we've got it all for you today in Just the Picks. So, our first artist artist here uh, uses two very important tools, fluffy wool and barbed needles, to make her magical animal sculptures all come to life. So each animal takes a lot of time and precision to get it just right. So look at how cute the rabbit is here. And, and don't you just want to hug him? She even creates full sculptures of your furry friends too. I would love to have one. Now, time to dust off the old furniture because our next artist challenges himself to renovate a mid-century cabinet that was only uh, falling apart. What is unique about his restoration, though, is that he uses all the main parts of the cabinet, the original pieces, the legs, the storage area. Well, he adds in some new paint, and this artist has to include his own very personal touch, and the artist chooses to add some hexagons uh, to the drawer, you know, modernize it a bit, but what a difference a little paint and some new parts make. It's brand new. And it's time to call the doctor because the self-proclaimed pavement surgeon is turning potholes into something beautiful to help brighten people's days. But you definitely need a PhD to make these sidewalks look as beautiful as he does. I mean, that's an absolute work of art. How fun would that to be to stumble upon those? And those are just the picks for today. Stay with us. Much more daily. Pose the question of chronic low energy, or as he puts it, why our get up and go has got up and gone. Now today, Dr. Gundry reveals why what so many of us do to improve our pep often actually depletes it and what we can do to actually turn the tide. People have come to believe that having fatigue is par for the course. And in fact, that's absolutely not the case. It is abnormal to have fatigue and be tired. Dr. Gundry says fatigue has reached epidemic proportions around the world. So why so many tired people? One of the reasons is chronic inflammation associated with many diseases. Inflammation that's chronic can be traced to actually leaky gut. 
Leaky gut occurs when cracks or holes develop in the lining of the intestines, allowing food particles, toxic waste, and bacteria to leak through and enter the bloodstream, causing inflammation. Inflammation needs lots of energy to be produced. And when we're feeding the fire of inflammation, that our troops, our immune system, actually eats most of the energy in our body. And so we're actually rationing energy to the rest of our body because we're in a war. Often the foods we eat for fuel also act against us. Organelles in our cells, known as mitochondria, turn the proteins, fats, and carbohydrates that we eat into energy. When we eat too many highly processed foods, these nutrients get instantly absorbed. They jam up the mitochondria and prevent them from doing their job. 16 hours a day, the average American is eating something. And so we have literally rush hour. And then we only have eight hours to kind of clear out the traffic before everything starts again. When nutrients are given time to break down individually, mitochondria do their job efficiently and produce the energy we need. For that to happen, Dr. Gundry suggests eating more of a whole foods-based diet and practicing intermittent fasting, which restricts eating to a limited number of hours each day. This two-pronged approach can help with leaky gut and strengthen mitochondria. Mitochondria have to have rest periods. The longer you can give them with minimal work in terms of eating, the more they repair themselves. If we can get people to limit their eating periods to about six hours a day, the more energy their mitochondria end up producing. Dr. Gundry says other foods like yogurt and sauerkraut are fermented by live bacteria and contain postbiotics. Those postbiotics produce intestinal gases, which also aid in producing energy. So, do not be embarrassed. Be prepared to let it rip because the gas production actually tells your mitochondria to produce more energy. Fascinating. Moral of the story? Fatigue is not your fate. The steps to fix it are actually pretty easy. You can find those easy steps in The Energy Paradox available wherever books are sold. And you can also follow Dr. Stephen Gundry on social media. Now, there is much more Daily Mail TV ahead for you, including a guy reaching some new heights with his insane jumping skills. It's next in our last piece of mail.